at six o'clock. <clears throat> Welcome to the uh, December 19th meeting of the governing body. I call this meeting to order. Uh, if we will give our attention to councilman for the night, for the last time tonight, uh, Tony Emerson, who will provide the invocation. Uh, stand as you are able, and then remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah, to uh, paraphrase uh, President Ford, District 4, your long national nightmare is almost over. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, for the... <clears throat> I, uh, yeah, I'm a, I need to take like some of that, uh, I don't know, dry, dry stuff. So anyway, <laughs> hello, Henry. Uh, so yeah, so tonight I'd like to introduce my son, Andrew. Um, Andrew is a 20, what was last year? 2023, yeah, 2023 graduate <laughs> of Shawnee Heights High School. And he's currently a freshman at the Air Force Academy out in Colorado Springs. He just got back into town a couple nights ago. So Andrew, take it away. Which one? Either one. Either one. <laughs> Just the tall one. It's on. It's on. Okay, it's on. It's on. It's on. Uh, please bow your heads and uh, join me in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we humbly come tonight and ask that our hearts be filled with gratitude and a spirit of unity during this Advent season. I ask for your guidance, wisdom, and discernment for this council. May their discussions be marked by respect, understanding, and a shared commitment to the common good. Grant them the strength and compassion to address the needs of the vulnerable and marginalized in our community. May their decisions reflect a deep sense of empathy and a commitment to creating a city where all residents can thrive. We also lift up in prayer the brave men and women who serve in our armed forces around the world. Lord, protect them, guide them, and bring them home safely to their loved ones. Grant them courage in the face of challenges and peace in their hearts as they carry out their duties in the service to our nation. Lastly, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, who came to earth as a sacrifice for our sins. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> okay, we're going to have a little bit of out of sync uh, activities tonight uh, to honor our fellow council members, uh, Hannah Nager and Tony Emerson. And I'd like to be able to recognize their service. And so if I can have both of you join me at the front there. Don't drop any. Well, as, as it has often been said, um, serving on this council has been really a pleasure with these two people behind me. Uh, they have really become friends and not just council members. Uh, constantly I'm being bothered by Tony on my right, but I appreciate his presence all the time because he has so much knowledge and experience that he brought to the council that uh, the city has really benefited from his time on the council. and. Councilwoman Nager. She used to brag that she was probably the youngest on the council, but I think after the first year, she might have given it some second thought because <laughs> she probably got more gray hairs than she expected from coming on the council. But she's always been a delight. She's always been somebody I sought out and talked and visited with to get her perspective on things because in fact, she did have a different perspective from others of us who have been on the council for a while. So I really appreciate the fact that they were both willing to step forward and serve their community in the way that they have. And so I'd like to offer them a small token of our appreciation. A new car. A new car. New to you. A new fleet car.
Tony, I'd like to pre present this to you and it recognizes the fact that you also served in the capacity of deputy mayor in 2020 and in appreciation of your outstanding and dedicated service to the citizens of Topeka from May 2016 through January 2024. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Hannah, <laughs> presented to you as a council member of District 6, in appreciation of your outstanding and dedicated service to the citizens of Topeka, January 2020 to January 2024. I really enjoyed serving with you on the council. Thank you, Thank you so much, Thank Hannah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I'd like to, uh, at this time, recognize Councilwoman Sylvia Ortiz. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> you know, tonight is a special night. <clears throat> I'm going to miss my Zoom buddy, Hannah. And I'm really going to miss number four, <laughs> Tony Emerson. And, you know, we have had this long-standing battle be back between the Scots and the Highland Park at the Highland Park Scots and the Topeka High Trojans, but at the end of the day, I want to send you out of here with a bang. With a bang. <laughs> kind of worries me. And this uh -oh. is what I'm going to do for uh -oh. you. Okay. Because I know yeah, people in high places. Oh, wow. Gee, high oh, places. Oh, no. That's all awesome. person. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Well, surprise everyone! Hi, hi! Hi, hi! And we heard there's a little bit of a rivalry here mm -hmm. between the Highland Park and Speed High. Yes, there is. We thought it would only be fitting for us to come here and say, uh, me as a proud 30 year uh, member of 501 at Topeka High, that my style actually for the drum line at Topeka High came from Highland Park. Yes. So that rivalry <laughs> is sort of going to balance itself out tonight. So we're honored to be here. Thank you so much for everything you guys do. And we're just going to play something real short for you. I do want to give it up for my kids because they went on break last Friday. Yeah, yeah. And I told them last Friday. Hey, Hey guys, we've been requested to play for the city council. Let's go. So they raised their hand and said, let's do it. So they are giving up their night. You know they'd much rather be here than hanging out there. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So let's adjust. We'll call, come down a little bit. Yep. Stay up, stay up there. And now let's move over that way. Let's have some fun. Stay right there. It's going to be different. Yeah, let's have some fun. <laughs> All right, here we go. That's ready? Right. And you guys get to turn around this way. <laughs> yeah, let's do two that way, two that way. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, one six. <laughs> Ready? Here we go. Jacob, let him have it, baby. Like, like, I'm gonna go over here. Wow. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Just, just face each other. It's good. <laughs> here we go. Let's have some fun.
I know some of you here, a lot of times, but for those with this is your first time, we have a band every week, <laughs> just different, different bands, so, so uh, as, as, much as, I, as much as I hate you now, <laughs> that, was, uh, that was pretty awesome, so thanks. <laughs> Tony, Tony, that's to you. Thank you. Okay, motion to adjourn. <laughs> it's going to be hard to top that. Yeah, it will. <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman, for making that arrangement. I appreciate it. Okay, back to business. If you will uh, read the appointments, please, Brenda. A is a board appointment recommending the reappointment of James Parrish to the Downtown Business Improvement District Advisory Board for a term ending December 31, 2025. <laughs> B is a board appointment recommending the reappointment of Grant Sork to the Topeka Landmarks Commission for a term ending December 31, 2026. C is a board appointment recommending the reappointment of Kelsey Savage to the Topeka Tourism Business Improvement District Advisory Board for a term ending December 31, 2025. D is a board appointment recommending the appointment of Steve Larant to the Topeka Tim Lariant to the Topeka Tourism Business Improvement District Advisory Board for a term ending December 31, 2024. Okay. You've heard the appointments is read. Is there a motion? Move approval. Motion to approve by Councilman Nimerson. Second. Second by Councilwoman Nager. Oh, 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 we can can we use the yeah, voting yeah. machine today? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ooh, like a Christmas toy. <laughs> <laughs> Can we clear the board? I'm sorry, Mayor, you did not vote on this. Okay. Yeah. Not a toy. Not a toy. Okay. Not a toy, but you can't play one. Island of Misfits. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you should be ready to go. All right, we have nine yes, the motion carries. Okay, motion has been carried, and we'll move to agenda item Number three, presentations, if you will read, Ben. Uh, presentations on the prosecution of property maintenance code violations. Mr. Senior Manager. Mayor and Governing Body, I'm happy to introduce uh, Kelly J. Trussell, who is Chief of Prosecution, and we'll be making this presentation to you. Good evening. I, I, is, I am very excited actually to present this to you tonight. Um, my uh, use of the LLC ordinance that you passed last January in, in, in our criminal code enforcement um, in the Topeka Municipal Court I think has been quite successful and I think as this presentation will demonstrate that uh, it has become a very effective tool and something that we should um, continue to use. And, and be able to get much more effective results with entity uh, owners within Topeka. <coughs> now, criminal code cases are charged for uh, various types of uncorrected code violations. They can come from the property maintenance unit. Uh, those would be for interior and exterior um, violations of both commercial and residential properties. Uh, they can come from the zoning department. Uh, that, that may be a use of property issue or accessory structure issue. Um, they come over from the fire department, which would be for fail failed inspections or refusal to have inspections uh, for sprinkler systems, faulty alarms, etc. And prior to 2023, uh, these cases were charged in Topeka Municipal Court, but then they were dismissed when no one from the entity appeared at court. And the reason for that was that you, when you have an entity and they do not appear, we do not have the power to uh, issue a bench warrant for the failure to appear like we can to an individual. And so 
uh, in using this ordinance that was passed in January, um, it allowed us to enter default judgment for those entities that do not appear in court and ignore the criminal charges that have been filed. Now, prior to um, coming over to prosecution for charging, the departments that do refer these cases, um, they work very hard with these entities and any of the individuals that have code violations. Um, and it only gets referred over to prosecution once those violations are not getting resolved. Um, and uh, prosecution also works very closely with these departments and interacts with them and makes sure that we are um, on top of s issues that maybe have more priority than others and we expedite them as we need, it, as we need to. Um, also, most of the entity-owned properties in Topeka are rented to citizens in the community. And it's important to address those violations to assist the renters that are living in a residence that have code violations. And the same is true for businesses that may have uh, oper be operating under zoning and fire code uh, violations. Those are often a situation that poses risk to the public um, and they need to be corrected swiftly. This slide here represents all of the entity criminal code cases that have been filed in Topeka Municipal Court um, in 2023. The blue bar is the number of entire cases that have been filed and that is 142 different cases. Um, the orange bar represents how many are still pending and open cases within our court today. Um, and right now it sits at 51, and I'll address in a minute. It's actually a little bit lower than that now um, since I'm making these slides. But based off of these numbers, that's already in the first year a 64% resolution to these code cases. Now, the 64% shows that it's a very positive uh, success rate. But when you actually look at the statuses of the 51 remaining pending cases that are open, um, I think it will become very apparent that this default judgment ordinance has, has definitely um, allowed us with uh, very successful prosecution in getting code compliance. So, in this chart, the blue part of the pie represents the number of cases that we call CBO, corrected by owner. That means the violations have been corrected, the case has been dismissed, and the owners have complied and brought the, brought the issues back up into compliance. Um, that represents 53% of the 2023 cases that have been filed so far this year. They've been corrected by owner. Um, and, you know, default judgment is really not the goal in prosecution for these cases. We want the violations corrected. But default judgment is an important tool to give us options in order to get these corrections um, addressed because the entities now have an issue of not appearing in court but having this, this idea of default judgment against them. And one example is that one entity owner became aware of the default judgment that had been um, rendered against them and then immediately started correct the second case that was filed against them and is now cooperating and getting all of the violations resolved. And entity owners are also appearing at court. They're communicating with the inspectors. They're communicating with prosecution office and they're really trying to get these violations corrected. The corrected by owner compliance from the entity owners has been a huge difference from in the years past. Um, for example, there's one entity owner that often didn't cooperate with charges in the past. This year had 23 cases filed against that entity in 2023, and only two remain, and both of those are currently under construction. Um, and so 21 were resolved and two will be here shortly. It's also very important to look at the yellow and the green sections um, of this pie. And I should also back up and say that the orange piece is the, set, is the actual numbers that have actually gone through the entire default judgment process, and that's only 5% of the cases. It was seven total. Um, but the, the yellow represents uh, 22 cases where those owners are appearing in court. They are cooperating. They're in the process of complying. They're in the process of correcting all those violations. And soon we will see that yellow section move over into the blue section. Um, as being corrected by owner. And of the green section, what that represents, uh, right now it says 24, um, 
those are cases that are pending, they're filed, they have yet to have their first appearance. It's, in the, it's set in the future. So we don't know yet the status of whether they're going to appear. We don't know if they're going to cooperate. Um, most of them probably will, is what the trend has been. Um, but I'm happy to report that just in this last week, three cases out of that 24 were already corrected by owners. So that's actually a 21 number now instead of a 24. But breaking that down further, out of that 21 cases that is in that green section, 14 individual cases are against one entity, which means that it, we're actually only talking about eight owners themselves um, within that green section that are unknown at this time. So these numbers demonstrate that the use of the LLC ordinance for the prosecution of the code violations, it's, it's been very successful. Our first goal is to get these violations corrected and the vast majority of entity owners are now cooperating and they're addressing these violations. And this ordinance was really the difference that we needed to make for the community. If anyone has any questions, I'd be open to them. Any questions from the council? Kelly? Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. Good numbers, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda, if the clerk will read. A is a resolution introduced by Interim City Manager Richard Neinstead declaring the entire boundary of the City of Topeka for 2023. B are the minutes of the regular meeting of December 12, 2023, and there are no applications. Okay, you've heard the consent agenda is read. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Councilwoman Nager. Second. Second by Councilman uh, Emerson. And we'll <coughs> use our voting machine. Oh, yeah. What was his name? <laughs> All right, we have 10 yes, the motion carries. Okay, motion's carried. We'll move on to agenda item five, action items. If the clerk, clerk will read. A is an ordinance introduced by Interim City Manager Richard Neinstead establishing a service fee levy for 2024 relating to the Capital City Downtown Business Improvement District amending Section 34030 of the Topeka Municipal Code and repealing original section. Okay, hey, Mr. City Manager. Mayor and Governing Body, as you heard, um, this establishes a service fee for 2024 relating to Capital City Downtown Business Improvement District and uh, under section 3.40030 of the Topeka Municipal Code and repealing the original section. Any questions for the city manager? Councilman Kell. I've kind of got a, not a direct answer on this, but how do we know this is being collected? Because I know we, like when you look at somewhere like Travelers there for a while, it was a very, um, Cash friendly business out for there for a while and it was fully packed. But when I asked how we know what these are, these are getting paid on by some of these hotels. It's a good question. And I asked the acting director of finance, um, Rochelle Matthews to come to the podium. So this particular fee is related to the downtown business district. The hotel one will come up next in the agenda. Oh, okay. Sorry. Excuse me. Yeah, I jumped ahead on that one. Save your question. Yep. <laughs> okay. Any further questions? Is there a motion? Oh, Councilwoman Hiller. Uh, unless I should be deferring to Tony and. <laughs> well, uh, move to approve. approve. <laughs> Go ahead. Move to approve. Okay. Motion to approve by Councilwoman Hiller, second by Councilman Kell. All those. Well, at this time. Okay. Motion is carried. Uh, action item B, 5B. <clears throat> B is an ordinance introduced by Interim City Manager Richard Neinstead establishing a service fee levy for 2024 relating to the Topeka Tourism Business Improvement District, amending section 365035 of the Topeka Municipal Code and repealing original section. City Manager. And Kurt Young of the Topeka, who's the executive director of the Topeka Lodging Association, is here to answer any questions you might have. 
Any questions? Okay. Councilman Kell. So, so now I'll ask the question. <laughs> how, we, how we know these are being, uh, because, you know, some of the hotels in my district are very cash friendly and they're there for a while. They were very full. So I'm not sure if that was a something we were able to track as a as an entity. Yes, the uh, <clears throat> pardon me. I get a report every month from the city finance office uh, that tells me whether or not a property has paid for that given month or not. Uh, there are some properties who uh, it takes a lot of our resources from a TLA perspective to go out and knock on the door and, and uh, collect some of the past due amounts for the most part. I'd say we've, the number that we have to do that with is a very small number. The, all, the other thing that we have to recognize is that some of the properties uh, that you may be referring to are deal strictly in long-term stays. Folks are there for um, a month, two months, three months at a time, and the T-bid is only applicable, uh, is not applicable on anything, on any stay in excess of 28 days. So <clears throat> I'm trying to keep from losing my voice here. Uh, one of the things I have to do when I get that report is, is determine whether or not that property has been long-term stays, whether they're truly delinquent, and if they are delinquent or past due, then uh, we initiate uh, procedures. That procedure most often is me knocking on their door. Uh, but uh, yes, we do, we do monitor it very closely and we make every effort to get any money collected that, that is past due. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Further questions? Kurt? Seeing none, is there a motion? Move, move to approve by Councilman Nager, second, second by Councilman <coughs> Emerson, and we will vote when you're ready, Brenda. Okay, you can start. We have 10 yes, the motion carries. Okay. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you, Rochelle. <laughs> Move to agenda item 5C, please. C is an ordinance introduced by interim city manager Richard Neinstead, establishing a service fee levy for 2024 for the Noto Business Improvement District, amending section <coughs> 37030 of the Topeka Municipal Code and repealing original section. Okay. City manager. Mayor and governing body. Tom Underwood of the Noto Arts District, who is executive director, um, is here to answer any questions you might have about this fee. I think. Okay. Great question. Councilman Vadiviakala. There's no further dialogue. I think we're ready. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is there? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Councilwoman Vadiviakala. Is there a second? Second by Councilwoman Nager. Are we ready to vote, Penda? Thank you, Tom. That was very brief. I like that. Yes, I like that. <laughs> All right, we have 10. We have 10 yes, the motion carries. Okay. Move to action item 5D, if you will read. D is amendment to the development agreement Contract number 47841, dated as of May 14, 2019, implementing the Wanamaker Hills Community Improvement District between the City of Topeka, Kansas, and EIG Wanamaker, LLC. Mr. City Manager. Mayor and Governing Body, um, I believe that Jeff White is online. We'll be visiting with you online. And Ben Bingham with Possinelli Law Firm is here. And Rochelle Matthews. Is there a presentation or none? Any comments, questions? Is there a motion to entertain? Move to approve. Motion to approve by Councilman Duncan. Second. Second by Councilman or Deputy Mayor Dobler. 
Are we ready to vote? Ben? Yes. Okay. All right, we have 10 yes, the motion carries. Okay, thank you. If you will read action item 5E, please. He is approval of the social service grants recommendations for the 2024 calendar, 2025 priorities, scoring sheet, and continuation of contract with vendor. Mr. City Manager? I will respectfully turn this over to Council Member Ortiz, who is committee chair. Councilman? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, no, the drum line has, has left the building. <laughs> And I was working on that so hard that I forgot about that this was going to be on, that this was gonna be on the agenda. So my colleagues might want to want to chime in. <coughs> um, so um, let's see. I was I thought, oh crap, I got this. Okay. <laughs> so the social service uh, we um, committee we met. Um, and we set deadlines um, that will occur in 2024. We worked on the priority sheet a little bit, made a few changes there in the score sheet, made a few changes there. Uh, we, rec we recommend the continuation of the United Way of Greater Topeka as an outsourcing vendor for 2025, and then we'll have to come back. Um, their contract will be up, and then we'll have to come back and um, put it out for RFP. Um, we did um, put in 50,000 for services rendered to the United Way. Everything really, really went just as smooth as possible. Um, and um, we're bringing it back before you for approval, um, unless there's any other questions. And my colleagues might want to jump in there. Deputy Mayor Dover. Just a quick question. I haven't kept up with this, but it sounds like United Way is doing a, a good job. Uh, on our behalf, so maybe speak to that just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, United Way is, is doing an awesome job. You know, um, I just got put back on this after being off for several years, and this is a new process for me. Um, and um, I think there was a couple of niches in there, but they they figured them out. Um, what happened with the funding, I believe it was, with the funding. And, and um, they got in there and figured it out. We had some meetings and got it straightened out. but. I, I think they're doing a, an excellent job. Um, um, come back with um, the score sheets. I think I think we we changed that a little bit, didn't we? Be um, I, I think there was. I think it wasn't adding up or something. A couple of things. Well, you may remember that the well, we needed a little extra money to solve the mm -hmm. one glitch, but then this council had had approved some time ago to add money to that pot for next year. And so what you have in front of you includes that additional funding for next year. Right. And related to that, we, we did retain the same priorities that we've had before. Um, there had been a cap of 25,000 per grant in the past. And given that increase, we did raise the what you have before you raises the cap to 27. So provides a little inflation for the existing agencies, but still some room for shifts as well. Wiggle room, yeah. I, I think they're doing a great job. My colleagues, um, Brett, I don't know if you have anything to add. But. I, I think they're doing an amazing job. And even last year, they, they made a mistake and they owned it right away mm -hmm. once once it was figured out and and brought it to us. And, and so I think they're doing, doing a pretty good job myself. So with that, I'll make a motion to approve it. Second. Motion to approve by Councilwoman Ortiz. Second by Councilman uh, Kell. Are we ready to vote? Mayor. Uh, Councilwoman. Uh, I just want to clarify that I think the, the agenda just talks about the authorization of the payment to United Way, but I believe this motion is to approve the full recommendations for the system for next year. Mm -hmm. So we just want to make sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ready? All right. We have ten yes. The motion carries. Okay. Thank you. 
Now move on to uh, non-action items. Uh, the, uh, clerk will read. A is discussion concerning the creation of common consumption areas and designated area boundaries. City Manager. Turn this over to Councilman Duncan. Thanks, and City, the City Manager. Attorney. Attorney. Yeah. So we discussed this last week. It was discussed in committee several times. It's been discussed with the businesses for a while. Um, the feedback we've gotten in the last two weeks, since this is one on the agenda, is please pass this and let's just <laughs> move on to it. Um, two things I'd like to do this evening, because I know there's some outgoing council members who'd like an opportunity to participate in this maybe, or wipe it off our plate before the new year, is I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules and move this to an action item. And then after that, I will make a motion to address the hours issue that we discussed. So that's second. my first motion. Second. Motion uh, by Councilman Duncan, second by Councilman Ortiz. Me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm Valdivia Alcala. Okay. <laughs> Councilman Valdivia Alcala is the second to suspend. Uh, if we are ready to vote. <laughs> to an action item. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Let's try again. <laughs> what? It didn't count. Wait. Vote again the same thing? Yes. Sorry. Oh. Or did. No. <laughs> <laughs> something different. Yeah. We're out. Stay with me. Upgraded it so it tells us to vote. It's one foot out the door. <laughs> All right. We have 10 yes. The motion carries. Okay, we'll suspend the rules. Councilman Duncan. The only unresolved issue in there, which has been discussed, is the times, moving it up a little earlier. Uh, I honestly don't care what we move it to. We had one suggestion for 8 a.m. and another suggestion for 9 a.m. So if somebody wants to decide what that time should be, we'll roll with it and make a motion to make that amendment. Um, so that's really a, a discussion at this point is whether we want it 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. I don't know if staff has any thoughts on that or if it matters to them. Or. Um. We do not have thoughts on ours. Um, I will say when you're ready for it, there is a change that the legal department made because I realized I'm bad at geography. So the boundaries are right now and there's maps. Um, when I read it last week, I realized that those streets couldn't all run in the same direction. So everything has been <laughs> mapped by T TSG and all the boundaries are correctly written now in the ordinance that's in your packet. Councilman Cal. Uh, what's the state serving time? So that way we're just, you know. Doesn't matter. I, I, uh, I wasn't sure if they think six seven days. now or six. Was the mimosa I don't think, think we wanted to go six. that early. <laughs> I, I, I was trying to figure out if it, match, if it matched up somewhere, we can just match it that way. Councilman Hill? I'd like to move to amend it to eight. I think that the, the beauty of that is it's still, we could talk a little bit about the closing, but we'll stick Not with this one. You know, it, some, it's, uh, it's going to be up to the restaurants or the other, the merchants, whether they want to use that time. But I think it gives them full flexibility to do their own, let somebody go take their mimosa out and sit in Redbud Park or sit in front of a, in a pocket park or whatever, or to have events. If we, if we do eight, then they can, they can make their own plans and just roll with it. Is there an amendment? A move to amend the starting time to 8. Do you want to make that a dual amendment to say the starting time would be 8, the closing time would be midnight? That, that would be my preference if that's okay with you. <laughs> okay. I think 8 to midnight every day and then let the districts do what they want. Yes, 8 a.m. Yes, not 8 p.m. 8 a.m. <laughs> 8 a.m. to midnight daily <laughs> would be Does with the your approval of the amendment. Question. Deputy Mayor. Does the map include the council chambers? <laughs> no. That's my next question. I, I would second that amendment. Okay. okay. There's been a motion to amend and a second by Councilman Duncan. We mm -hmm. can vote on it. Yep. When you're ready. And is this voting a, to approve, right, with the amendment? This is just, just the, the amendment. amendment. This is the amendment. Okay. okay. Yeah. I 
Okay, I'm sorry. You have to start over. <laughs> I'm just not used to that. <laughs> okay, now you can go. We have nine yes with council member Ortiz voting that the motion carries. Okay, motion has been carried as amended and now. All right, but if I see you out yep. there with alcohol walking around. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that, I really think most of it's resolved. There may still be some questions. Obviously, feel free to ask. I know there was a boundary issue. I think staff took a look at that. I don't know if Amanda wants, not just what she described, but the line. She can explain that. Staff did look into that. Um, there was a question about the NOTO boundary. It does look a little weird. That is because of businesses that they were incorporating and how the streets don't run straight. Um, but there are no current bars or licensed areas in that remaining proximity. But if you look at the map, I'm not sure there's better ways to cut it out. But oftentimes you guys are far more creative than I am as you look at things. Um, so there is a weird jut out that goes into part of the neighborhood in NOTO. If you look at the map, it's where Gordon becomes, oh. like Jackson passes Gordon and jots out to Fairchild, but the business district keeps going down. Right, and I think there was a question about the sidewalk boundary, right? Wasn't Oh, yes, the sidewalk boundary as well. Yeah. Um, sorry, got too many boundary no, questions. Uh, um, <laughs> this is not a zoning issue. There is no concern the sidewalks inside the square are what counts. So you gotta be inside the square. If your sidewalk is not within these red lines, it is not part of the zone. Councilwoman Hiller. I'm sorry, I don't bring all those printed things here. I'm used to seeing them. So I don't know what that zone is. The question I asked last time was, can it include both sides of the street? Um, was, was part of it, and is that changed? It goes, it creates a box. So it's not, if your street is your boundary, it's from the far end of the street inward. So if your business is on the opposite side of that street, it's not covered. It's the side of the street that way. Okay, I was in a conversation. Because people want to do things in the street and by creating this zone, it would allow that without, without all the alcohol permit hassles. But I really think it needs to go, it needs to include the easement on the opposite side of the street. So if there is an event in the street, it's, it's not a hassle. And you can't like not step up on the curb. I, I uh, the other thing that came up in conversation today regarding that would be if, if that really means that you go down the middle of the street. So only the businesses on one side of the street can be involved. But if there's a business on the other side of the street, they can't. And I don't know if there's been conversation with TPAC, but the TPAC issue came up. If we, if Quincy's included and both sides of Quincy are eligible, then TPAC could be included. It, it's not, it's Quincy westward. Um, but also, I think there's a misconception. This doesn't allow you to have events in the middle of the street. Right. That still requires a special event permit. If you wanna have a event in the middle of the street, that's a public safety issue. You gotta close the street, you gotta get a special event permit, and that will control over common consumption. This allows you to walk down a sidewalk. It does not allow you to walk in the street and have events in the middle of the street and drink without additional permitting. So this doesn't replace any current law. It's an addition to current law. So when people wanna have that street event, we are then going to still have to designate that area for that event. I understand that absolutely, but the issue is once that event's going on, if the common consumption, if you're in the zone, then you can participate in that. Um, right, but dirt, so let's say, let me use a bad example. Let's say that between Kansas and Jackson on seven, right? I'm just making this up for the moment. All right, let's say it's not part of this, although it is. And let's say Celtic Fox or somebody wants to block off that part. People could walk out of that Celtic Fox zoned event into the common consumption area during that event. Once the event is over, the new border goes back up, and that's that. So for those special events during that event, they could go into those areas as long as they've been designated with that special permit. I understand that. I'm just trying to 
make sure it's comfortable and we don't have rules like the border of the street that people don't Well, the good imagine. news is if we're wrong on these borders, we can literally come back in a week or, you know, as we get it in place and say, oops, we should have included all of Jackson or all. We want TPAC in it now. Let's do that. Because I do think TPAC, if we want that included, is a larger conversation. It's part of a city-owned property. I know they have their own liquor license, but we license with them. So that's probably a longer conversation to make sure we're all on board with whatever TPAC wants to do with their alcohol. Well, and that com conversation just came up this morning, so yeah. I didn't have time to <laughs> yeah. talk to them, and I don't know. But what I, th I do is. think we're covering your concern, but I think if we're not, it's easily correctable the way we've designed it. I do believe that. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Now. You want to make a motion? <laughs> motion to approve, Mayor. Motion to approve by Councilman Duncan. Yeah, Councilman, I'm sorry. Oh, I was doing not. some quick. It. I was okay. doing some quick legal research over here, and it needs to be 11:59 p.m., not mm. midnight, because otherwise midnight starts spinning yes, you the into day. endless days. So if you you're subject friendly to approve, <laughs> has yes. the friendly amendment friendly that it's really 11:59 p.m. There we go. That's right. <laughs> Dang time. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Motion and a second by Deputy Mayor. Tell us when you're ready, Brenda. Ready. Go ahead. <coughs> All right, we have 10 yes. The motion carries. Okay. Motion's been carried. That's the end of our action items on the agenda. We'll move to public comment, and we have Mr. Henry McClure signed up for comment this evening. Henry? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Your Honor, thank you. Um, the, um, it's nice you brought up the travelers tonight. Uh, when I listed that property, the guy offered me to give his uh, books to me, and I, I didn't want his books because I wanted to tear it down. But what's most interesting, let's pick up from the last JETO meeting that I missed that I thought I, I missed the notice on, but I'm going to be more awake. But it was interesting about that $5 million carryover. And then it was also interesting about the dancing over the, uh, the lights for the Christmas tree. You know, they got, you got funding for the Christmas tree lights. They got two new jobs. But over my career here, every deal I brought in didn't ever qualify for funds <coughs> for economic development. And, and, and so, and my, my history with this goes back, and so we gotta tell the truth. So the history goes back to Yes Topeka, when we went out and tried to raise funds for this to create, because the whole idea was we were gonna broaden the tax base. It, it, it didn't work. You know, you know who I love is that, you know Chuck Wright, you remember him? He used to be mayor. Chuck goes, Henry, this is a good idea, but it's just gonna turn into a slush fund. Where's the mayor to Chuck Wright when you need him? Because that's what it is, it's just a, a slush fund. Plus, on top of that, we shouldn't have a not-for-profit charging us 38%. Now, since Glenda retired, that's probably a huge savings, but still the overhead, and think about the rent this, you shouldn't, a not-for-profit shouldn't be renting Class A office space. The city or the county ought to give them space for free. You know, Mary Thomas with the county, or uh, CRC, she runs a million dollars, char charges 1%. I'll bet you Mary Thomas will give uh, that organization space for free. <clears throat> but, but we're spending way too much money. But here's what's interesting. At that last JETO meeting, that I was surprised I ever got to talk to. I know you regret that. But uh, uh, then people were marched down. Hey, we're going to bring this guy down. And no, we don't have the money for him. And then this guy comes down. We don't have the money for it. And then the same guy that did, that did all the marching, he's, he's asking the question like, well, what do you need this $5 million for? Well, we might make some big deal. Well, so you, what I'm telling you, is you got $5 million to tear down the travelers. But now I'm gonna make a new request because I wanna point out 
that uh, the way you treat developers doesn't work. And we're going to talk about Lawrence Bay. And we're going to talk about a decade of taxes. Oh, man, I was only going to go two minutes. I'm sorry. We're going to talk about a decade of not paying taxes. So let's look at Lawrence Bay as the, uh, the model of why you don't treat developers that way. So due to the popularity of uh, the Rochester Road Project, we've got, I've got a couple of contracts going. And so I need a million six to put the sewer line in to develop both sides of uh, that Rochester Road. And so the, the interlocal agreement says infrastructure, economic development, and uh, quality of life. And if I could have just got the police department to vote on the travelers, it would have been torn down. And now, um, since the, thank you. Would you like some more time, Henry? One minute. Two minutes. Two minutes. Move two minutes. Okay. Oh, I love you, man. And this is your last meeting? <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh, man. Well, I don't know. Uh, uh, two more minutes. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Two minutes. And I'm going to miss you. And by the way, great job with the drum line. Your stock went way up. That was good. <laughs> that was, there's hope for you, Sylvie. I love you. Merry Christmas. You know, I had two shots at that sewer line. I had two <coughs> shots at that sewer line over my lifetime. When I sold land to the optometrist, I had a bite at the apple to put an easement across the back of his land. 29th. Yeah, 29th. I switched gears. Okay. Because Rochester Road, we all know Rochester Road. And I, plus, I got to get some fancy charts. And I'll get the, I'll get the, uh, I want to get a reference from the, uh, the, Christmas tree lighting guy to help me with my presentation. <laughs> but um, I had another shot at the uh, the sewer line when I sold you guys the land for the, the water tower. But, you know, it shouldn't take two years for a little guy like me to come in and get a, a Pizza Hut deal done. Fortunately, that same group just got approved through planning. They got their traffic study done first. So, um, anyway, I'm going to miss you. You did a good job. Uh, he took every phone call of mine. and But you know something? They were all legitimate calls. They were. We don't have a per We should be building. We should be building on the boulevard. And just because the landowner's nice, you know, this is my town. It's our town. I wish you'd have been here last time I talked because I, you would have let me sing happy birthday to the peak, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but um, the model for developers doesn't work. You can't, and maybe the fact that a guy gets special treatment, you know, power corrupts, absolute powers, absolute corruption. But you can't give a guy 10 years of tax abatements or delinquent taxes. Maybe he's succeeding because he doesn't play by the rules. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Henry. Okay, there's uh, no other <sighs> person signed up. Uh, is there a need for an executive session? Yes. Um, if the city attorney will read. Announcements, right. Mayor. Oh. oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> See, what am I going to do with that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> <Might be there. laughs> okay, we'll move to announcements. Uh, Madam Clerk. There's no meeting next week. <laughs> Yay. Mr. City Manager. Okay. See, <laughs> Councilman uh, Emerson. Thank you, Mayor. Would you mind if uh, me and, well, I don't want to speak for Councilwoman Nager, but could we go last? Would you mind? Yeah. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Councilman Cal. I'd just like to thank these two sitting to my left and to my right. Um, you know, Tony was from day one has been there for me uh, to learn this job, and it was uh, very appreciative. Uh, this thing is, like I always joke, it's 
when I first started, it was like trying to drink from a fire hose uh, on full blast. So it was, I, I've had two great colleagues to each side of me uh, that uh, put up with me, put up with my shenanigans, <laughs> and uh, I really appreciated them. Everyone have a happy holidays. Please drive safe. You know, have a designated driver, take a, take a, a ride share service, call a taxi, do what you need to do, be safe this uh, next couple weeks, and uh, have a, a great holidays. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Deputy Mayor. Thanks, Mayor. Yeah, just a quick thank you to both uh, Councilman Emerson and Councilwoman Nager. It's been a pleasure. Uh, you've added a lot to the council. Uh, we're going to miss you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilman Duncan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, human nature when we transition is to focus on the list undone, right? The boxes you didn't check, the things that you left dangling, that, that's probably your first thought as you leave is, oh, if only I could have done this, if only I could have done that. Um, but that's how we all feel regardless of what that transition in life is. What we forget to do is focus on the things we did accomplish. And the truth is, sitting up here, you'll never know the impact you made. There's no way to quantify it. There's no way to calculate it. You're not going to hear from all the people who you helped. We'll hear from all the people who got mad at us, and that's okay. <laughs> that's what we sign on for, and that, that's part of the deal. But so know, you know, that despite the list of unchecked, unaccomplished things that you think you've left, uh, there's a much bigger list of things that you did get done in your four and eight years, and, and the people of Topeka appreciate that, and we certainly appreciate that. So thank you very much. And to the rest of the world, um, Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, good Kwanzaa, Happy New Year, and hope everybody's holidays go well. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Hofer. I want to make sure everyone knew that Gage Boulevard is open from 10th to Huntu. <laughs> they opened, I believe, yesterday, and that project is finished. It's good news for District, district 6 and 9, because we're the ones on the border for Gage Boulevard. So. That was good news, and I'm going to miss both of you. Councilwoman Hiller. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to thank you both as well. I think about the contributions through the years. Others have touched on some other points. Um, Tony, you've been such a great resource to me, and but to all of us, I think, um, and your dry sense of humor. <laughs> Correct. And Hannah. Your, your strong commitment to doing the right thing, you're, you've been so steadfast with that. Plus, we will miss your hand-lettered <laughs> notes about important things we should know. <laughs> Other than that, um, I think the SSG committee did a good job and the staff that supported it, and I appreciate having had the chance to serve on that. Spencer bringing this consum common consumption and, and a lot of the other issues forward. You, you really worked your policy and finance committee and you all did a good job. And uh, I want to thank Kelly and, and Amanda, the legal department, for on behalf of changing our culture of property maintenance and the big mission that we all jointly took on to make a difference with uh, property maintenance. You all stepped up, you supported us and then got ahead of us and then made it happen and really appreciate that in your presentation tonight. More to come, right? <laughs> Thank you. Councilwoman Valdivia. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Nager, see you in the dentist chair. <laughs> Next. Keep working on these bad teeth of mine. Uh, Emerson, I don't know when I'm going to see you, man. Probably <laughs> driving somewhere around Santa Fe Park or something. But um, best of luck to you all. The time goes quick. There's never enough time. There's always more to do than what we have the time to do. But good luck to you all in your future endeavors. Uh, happy holidays to all, old-fashioned Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Also, I uh, wanted to let folks know that yesterday was the Three Shields Boxing uh, Christmas party, mm -hmm. and we gave away 47 gifts to kids between the ages of 3 to 18. Now, the 3-year-old was not a boxer, <laughs> but he was part of the families. Right that come and make up the Three Shields Boxing family, and it really has become a familial uh, unit. Um, Chief, I'm gonna keep telling you that the, I know you're listening somewhere, the importance of PAL cannot be um, overstated, and the importance of Darren Campbell as an SRO, and also as one of the main coaches 
uh, who is coming up through the ranks of coaching in Three Shields Boxing. Um, he's phenomenal, and you cannot fake enjoying working with kids because the kids will see right through it, and he's the real deal. So also a shout out to the Jardine Middle School Jaguar young ladies. Last week, um, their basketball team for the fifth year in, the, in a row won the Topeka Public School Middle School Girls Championship. My little granddaughter Kennedy was out there hustling, playing some really hard defense, uh, not trying to foul out. Uh, she did she did a good job good job to the ladies young ladies and their phenomenal coaches um, and I would just say for my colleagues on the council um, to have a blessed holiday um, you know um, councilman Duncan and I can say on January 2nd we're back <laughs> and so I think it's going to be an intense year there's going to be, I, I think there's going to be a lot of movement. So we just all need to, to be ready to come to it on January 2nd and excited about uh, having the swearing in of additional two council people. And also stay safe, everyone. For those that can't afford it, please give to those who do not because there is so much need out there. Thank you. Councilwoman Ortiz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to wish everybody happy holidays, Merry Christmas, however you celebrate. I, I think I'm not going to be long. I kind of, I've already had my moment tonight, and it was a good one. <laughs> and then some. It's one that I can put, you should have seen the mayor's face when I told him what I was going to do. He goes, does anybody know? <laughs> he could not believe it. I said, nope. To Hannah, my Zoom buddy, she was always there when I said, ah, I'm going to Zoom, and she was always there <laughs> Zooming with me. She was right there with me, so she always had my back. Um, I'm not going to say I miss you because we'll stu still do Friday, Friday lunches. So thank you for being who you are, and thank you for always having my back. And um, to Mr. Henderson, you know, when I call you by your right name, people don't understand who I'm talking about. <laughs> So you will always go down in history. I want to finally um, thank you for um, Quincy. I don't know if it's done. I don't know if it's right, but but Quincy Street, people are still asking me if the parking right is the where's the stoplight. So uh, it took a little little push, but we got we got that done. Um, I will miss you, and I will continue to blow up your phone and ask you for suggestions about everything that you did bring positive to the table. Um, you had you have a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience and you do know East Topeka and that's that's <laughs> awesome the only thing is oh, Erica. don't ever forget oh, I, don't want to hear I have friends oh. in Topeka high places Tony and Hannah do you want to go ahead Okay. You guys know I have trouble sometimes getting through stuff, so I'm just going to read this, okay? I'm not going to look at any of you guys. <laughs> this should be, I, you know, we were kidding back here before we had to have a reception. I, I said this should be more like anybody's a Seinfeld fan, like Festivus, right? The, no, airing, Festivus. the airing of grievances, you know? I have a lot of, I have a lot of problem with all you people. <laughs> no, no. Uh, so I'm here tonight with mixed emotions as I bid farewell to a chapter in my life that has been both challenging and immensely rewarding. Uh, it's been a distinct honor to serve as a city councilman for the past seven and a half years, representing the neighborhood where I grew up. As I reflect on this journey, I'm filled with gratitude for the trust voters placed in me to be their voice and advocate on the city council. Serving the very community that shaped my upbringing has been more than a duty. It's been a privilege and I pray that I proved worthy of that trust. Uh, to the city staff uh, that I've worked with over these, even before I was here for the 30 some years that I've been doing it, um, I'm overwhelmed by the dedication and talent that you uh, demonstrate. Uh, and you know, just looking out here tonight, you know, I, I see Tony and and Karan and Sylvia, and people don't know how lucky we are to have you guys. Uh, and much of what you do goes unseen by the public, but our citizens should know uh, they're well served by your efforts. And I. Amanda as well. I mean, you see her a lot up here, but um, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and a lot of great things that happen, And but you only tend to hear about the, 
the mistakes or the problems. And we do make those, especially me. <laughs> uh, to my fellow council members and mayor, thank you for your dedication, your passion, and your unwavering commitment to public service. It's been an honor to serve alongside each and every one of you. Our collaboration has shown me the power of unity and the positive impact we can have when we work together for a common cause. Together we faced challenges, made tough decisions, shared a lot of laughs, and sometimes had to navigate through stormy debates. But through it all, we persevered, always keeping the best interests of Topeka at the forefront. I also want to express my gratitude to my kids, Katie, Sydney, Reagan, Andrew, and Jeremiah, who often paid the price during my years in office, and especially to my wife, Allison, who spent too many nights as a single parent during my tenure, and I'll be home soon. Um, as I leave, I carry with me the memories of our shared triumphs and the lessons learned from the challenges we faced. Sorry. While my time as a councilman may be coming to an end, my commitment to this community remains steadfast, and I'm confident the foundation, we, the foundation we built together will continue to support the growth and prosperity of Topeka. I'm proud to have played a very small role in Topeka's story, and always remember, as Councilman, Councilwoman Ortiz knows, and it's on here, it's great to be a Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I wish I would have gone first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for this opportunity to serve. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your challenges. Thank you for your congratulations. Um, I was trying to reflect on the things that, I, not the long list of to-dos, but the things that we have accomplished. And there are two things I know for me that have been absolutely astounding and I'm so happy that I was a part of them. And the first was during my first year of office, teaming up with the Human Relations Commission and making updates to the non-discrimination ordinance to make the city not only formally a more welcoming and protected place, but to be very, very clear to the um, world around us what we stand for and its inclusion and its love and its support. And I really have a lot of um, gratitude for our former city attorney, Lisa Robertson, for working on that with the um, Topeka Human Relations Commission, especially with um, William Nager, who was serving on the commission at the time, and my brother, whom I love very, very much. I'm also extremely proud and just still exhausted from the work that was done by the Policy and Finance Committee last year for um, distributing the American Rescue Plan Act funds. Um, and that was with the council members that I was sworn in with, Valdivia, Alcala, and Duncan. And I really appreciate the work that we all were able to go ahead and put into that. I appreciate so much the staff because we would have been at a loss of what to do with any of it. So thank you so much. Um, I know that those dollars have made a huge difference in our community so far. And I know that with our goal of making that um, exponential, um, not production, but we wanted to amplify those funds. And I think that we are on our way. That is something that's still happening and I'm very, very proud of that. Um, thank you so much to all of you. Thank you for being there whenever I couldn't. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your expertise. Um, this has been such an incredible learning experience. And I know it's not done because life itself is a learning experience, but I really, really appreciate you all. I appreciate the mayor, Padilla, and our former mayor, um, um, De La Isla, the um, grace with which both of you have conducted yourselves in this position where you get the best and the absolute worst, I very much admire and I appreciate. Um, I, again, the staff is what keeps this city going. We come here once a week. 
um, and we come in for committee meetings and we we speak on things that we're passionate about, but there are some things you just, even as somebody who signs up for city, for city council, you can't be excited about every single thing that comes across our desk and the staff, the attention that you pay to our citizens, um, the care, the fact that you put up with some of those emails, I appreciate you so much. You keep this place going, and that is probably the biggest lesson I've learned is how lucky we are to have all of you. Um, on the personal front, I am very appreciative to my family, who has always been incredibly supportive of this and my other endeavors. It's happening to me, too. Um, to my husband, whom I love very, very much, and met at the beginning of this and so he's always known me as a city council person so he doesn't know what we're going to do on tuesdays anymore <laughs> but i appreciate you Stephen, and to the people who voted for me to my district and to my hometown i also got the um, opportunity to serve for the district that i was raised in and that has been humbling and the privilege of a lifetime so and a final sign off I just wanted to let everybody know, thank you so much. I am eternally grateful. And I already told the mayor that if I need to talk to you guys, I'll sign up for my four minutes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Well, I'll speak before we go into our executive session. Uh, it's hard to follow the sentiments that have been expressed by both Hannah and Tony. Um, but as I listen to everything that you brought up and what the experience has meant to you, I think what you have done for us, and I think, uh, I know I've said it before, uh, every council has its own personality and character. And I have really felt that this has been uh, a meeting of like-minded, dedicated people who have raised the level, I think, of what people should look for and expect from our city council. I think both of you are excellent role models for those in the community who want to take their turn in these seats because uh, they can see how one person can make a difference when they're working with others. And both of you are ex great examples of that. And so I thank you for everything that you've done. I've enjoyed our margaritas, <laughs> talking over the things that we both had interest in. I enjoyed visiting with Tony every chance I got uh, because it was never all just business. It was a personal relationship that I think made our work together so satisfying. Uh, so again, as role models for the community, I thank you for everything that you've brought to this council. Thank you very much. Now, we have the need for an executive session, and the, if the city attorney will oh, read. Sorry, tried to get ahead of you. Uh, the uh, motion would be to recess into executive session, not to exceed one hour, to discuss performance and other employment matters related to one or more non-elected personnel pursuant to KSA 754319B1, the open meeting will resume in the city council chambers. The following staff may be needed to assist the governing body in its deliberations, interim city manager Neinstadt, and other individuals he finds necessary. Is there a motion for executive Move approval. Move to uh, executive session from Councilman Emerson, second by Councilwoman Ortiz. Uh, we can vote. I know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? We have nine yes. The motion carries. And we're watching. I'm finally joining you on the no side. She wants to keep you here, and you're ready. Okay, we will take a 10-minute recess and, and then move into executive session. Thank you all. We should have rigged it. Again. Out of our executive session, I completed our discussions.
there being no further business coming before this body. I wish you all happy holidays and safe travels. This meeting is adjourned. Okay, all right. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas.